Let's go. And we will sing. Oh. Hello, welcome to the beginning of another working week, the first full working week in the month of December 2022. Today is Monday, the fifth day of December 2022, and this is your live boy today. Your live boy today wants you to be able to differentiate between God knowledge and head knowledge. Therefore, the topic is God knowledge, not head knowledge. Let's Go quickly find out from the scriptures we'll be reading from the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark in chapter 12. And we'll be beginning today from the 28th verse. Quickly, let's go. One of the scribes came up and had them disputing with another, with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandments is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandments greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. The account of his encounter with Jesus was just one of those several encounters he had sometimes with the Pharisees who perhaps were the most aligned to him in the sense that at least they believed in the resurrection. This encounter was about a scribe. Those were the ones that um, were trained specially to be able to rewrite the scripture so that they produced more copies. And they were also like the secretaries of the priests, you know, those ones that were also on the line to become priests. And then there were, of course, the Sadducees who never, in fact, believed in the resurrection. And so were opposed to the Pharisees and to Jesus at one and the same time. But virtually all of these people had head knowledge, not God knowledge. Because if they had God knowledge, they would have known that Jesus was come to save the world. And that it was of him that the scriptures had written of, whole, of old, that a child would be born, a son would be given, and that the government of the world would be upon his shoulders and that he will come from the root of Jesse, and that the scepter will never depart from Judah. If they read Moses very well, and the prophets, ought they not to have known? But they read, but not with God knowledge. They read with head knowledge. They knew everything about theology. Some of them even knew about astrology, about philosophy, about mathematics, science, and so many other uh, bodies of knowledge that they had absolute control over, but none was inspired of the Holy Spirit in most situations, and therefore was not God knowledge. Do you have God knowledge? Or you are also relying entirely on, oh, we've been to Bible school, we have passed all the examinations in all colleges of theology. In fact, we are professors of theology. Let me tell you, 
unless you are led by the Spirit of God, unless you have a good relationship through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with the Godhead, unless the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is available to you and you take it to teach you, to comfort you, to guide you in everything that you would say in every situation, then you are deceiving yourself because then you probably just have head knowledge and not God knowledge. The moment I came across this topic, my mind went straight to somebody and I decided to go and read a little more about him and I decided that I must read an account of this man that I got from one of the sources of my information. That man was called Julius Wellhausen. I'd read about him before, so the moment I was reading about head knowledge and God knowledge relating to the topic for today, I said, I must go and find out what is it about Julius Wellhausen that I learned and why did he come to my mind. Let me read to you a few things about Julius Wellhausen and then I'll leave you to make a judgment whether he had God knowledge or head knowledge. This was a man that was born 7th of January 1918. He was a German biblical scholar and orientalist. He knew a lot of things about astrology, about things from the Orient, and noted particularly for his contribution to scholarly understanding of the origin of the Pentateuch Structura. Those are the first five books of the Bible that traditionally were believed to have been written by Moses. But he was able to come up with a body of knowledge to determine that perhaps it was oral tradition and not necessarily uh, Moses that wrote everything. He was an absolute authority on the Old Testament scriptures. Let me read a little more about him from here. It says, born at Hamelin in the kingdom of Hanover, the son of a Protestant pastor, he studied theology at the University of Göttingen under George Heinrich August Ewald and became a private do docent for Old Testament. That's an authority on Old Testament if history there in the year 1870. And in 1872, he was appointed Professor Ordinarius of Theology. That's at the University of Greifswald, also in Germany. Now, he resigned from the faculty in 1882, just after 10 years of being a professor, for reasons of conscience. And stating in his letter of resignation, and this is what I want you to listen to with rapt attention. This is what Julius Wellhausen wrote in his letter of resignation after, after 10 years of being an authority and a pro professor of Old Testament theology. He said, I became a theologian because the scientific tr treatment of the Bible interested me. Only gradually did I come to understand that a professor of theology also has the practical tra task of preparing the students for the service in the Protestant church. And that I am not adequate to this practical task. But that instead, despite all caution on my own part, I make my hearers unfit for their office. Since then, my theological professorship has been weighing heavily on my conscience. That's what I wanted you to listen to. But you may go and read the more about, <coughs> excuse me, about Julius Wilhelmsen yourself. But one of the things I read about him, maybe in this account or another one, was that eventually his colleagues had to convince him that he should move over to the New Testament because perhaps his too much studies, too much knowledge of the Old Testament was leading him to actually believe at a point in time that there was no God. And there is no account that I am able to be sure that Julius Wolhausen, the son of a pastor, himself growing up to be a theologian, there is no account. I am not sure that he died a Christian. He had absolute head knowledge, but at a point in time, at least it is certain he admitted it, that he had no God knowledge. And we are not sure whether at the time of his passage to eternity, he was restored to having God knowledge. Do you have God knowledge? Are you familiar with the word of God? And are you familiar with that word of God, Jesus Christ? Not just the words as in the letters of the scriptures. Are you being led by the Holy Spirit? If you are not sure about all this, this is the time for you to rededicate your life to Christ. Or come straight for the first time and give your life to Christ. If you are set for that experience, 
Just say these prayers after me. Say, Lord, I come to you right now. I want to have a proper God knowledge of you and grow in faith. I have lived my life all along as a sinner or perhaps a nominal reader of the scriptures with head knowledge. Forgive me today. Let me begin to have a new lease of life. That from today, I will be helped of you to walk straight in that narrow path of knowing the will and the word of God and having a God knowledge of the scriptures. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you said that prayer, welcome to the fold of Christ. I need to tell you, you need to find a Bible-believing church where you can grow in the faith. And like I always say, make sure that if you happen to be in Oshobo, Oshun State, Nigeria, you come straight to the Anglican Church, Oroki Estate Extension. You can see us and meet us and fellowship with us every Wednesday, 5 o'clock in the late afternoon. And if it's on Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning. And the place is the chapel hall. For now, all the Olive Branches, Middle and High Schools, Onyiko and Gokio, me brought drive Oroki Estate Extension, Oshobo. And as you come, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. For now, and as you go out today, say this prayer. Everyone, let's say this prayer together. Say, Lord, please help me not only to know about you in letters, but to know you intimately and personally through the Spirit and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So go out today. Recognize that there is the head knowledge and there is the God knowledge of God. Stick closely to that God knowledge and it will be well with you. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful. I call you good.